in this section, we'll look at the uh, beginning of national progressivism with the rise of Theodore Roosevelt, or as he was known, T.R., or uh, Teddy Roosevelt. By the end of the 1890s, it was becoming apparent to everyone that this broad and diverse reform movement had, that had spread from state to state, you know, it, was, it, it could affect national politics. And this worried the incumbent anti-reform old guard stalwart Republican president, William McKinley. A pro-business conservative elected in 1896, McKinley faced re-election in 1900. And when his vice president died in 1899, McKinley had to pick a new running mate. Now, New York conservative stalwarts were anxious to get rid of their activist, mugwump reformer governor, Theodore Roosevelt and pushed him for the nomination just to get him out of New York politics. McKinley's political advisor, Mark Hanner, Hanna mentioned uh, in the earlier Industrial Revolution lecture, knew that Roosevelt uh, did not like McKinley's lazy affair, but eventually came to believe that a young, reform-minded Republican governor on the ticket was a good way to keep the divided Republican Party together. Republicans who might vote for others, you know, who advocated reform, they would stick with the party. In any event, Hannah assumed if McKinley won, you know, McKinley would still be in charge and he could block all reform efforts. The vice president, after all, had very little constitutional power. The plan worked. The election of 1900 once again pitted McKinley against the Democratic candidate William Jennings Bryan. And in 1900, McKinley expanded his margin of victory, winning almost 52% of the popular vote and uh, winning the Electoral College 292 to 155. Soon after the election, however, a night, the nightmare that Hannah had assumed would never take place happened. Six months after his second inaugural, on September 6, 1901, McKinley was standing in a receiving line at the Buffalo Pan American Exposition when a deranged anarchist shot him twice. McKinley died eight days later. Now, the laissez-faire, conservative Hannah lamented that McKinley had a TR on the ticket. That damn cowboy, as Hannah described TR, was now president. The progressive movement had finally reached the White House. Before we look at uh, Teddy Roosevelt's progressivism, it's interesting to look at TR the man. Born to a wealthy New York City family, Roosevelt was kind of a sickly child. He had, he had debilitating asthma and really bad eyesight. And, uh, you know, throughout his life, Roosevelt's going to work hard to overcome uh, these health problems. And he, he ended up stressing a real strenuous lifestyle. He, he uh, had an exuberant personality and a, and a vast range of interest. And he, uh, he always tried to personify a very masculine, strong cowboy persona. Roosevelt went to Harvard University and soon thereafter wrote a a book on one of his interests on naval history. It was the first of many books he wrote. But uh, after getting married, his, his wife died, and it really, uh, his true love and life really, really grieved Roosevelt, and he went to work on a, a cattle ranch in Dakotas to get away. It was working on the uh, cattle ranch that Roosevelt fell in love with the West and developed a lifelong interest in uh, the natural environment. But returning home refreshed, uh, Roosevelt served as a uh, New York State Assemblyman and then as New York City's Police Commissioner. Finally, uh, he was appointed the United States Civil, to the United States Civil Service Commissioner, uh, all while you know pursuing a sort of an activist reform agenda. After an unsuccessful run for mayor of New York City, Roosevelt was appointed Assistant Secretary of Navy under McKinley. Roosevelt served only one term because the Spanish-American War broke out, uh, which we'll discuss in the imperialism topic. But Roosevelt resigned his position and formed a volunteer cavalry unit known as the Rough Riders. Returning from the Spanish-American War, a, a true hero, Roosevelt was elected governor of New York and began pushing reforms, which, as we've already said, worried the conservative old guard, stalwart uh, Republicans in New York and, and people like Mark Hanna. And so, uh, you know, this again led to Roosevelt's nomination as vice president under McKinley in 1900, again as an attempt to get him out of New York politics and put him in a, a do-nothing position. When McKinley was shot, Roosevelt was only 42 and thus became the youngest person ever to serve as president. 
While the public knew him as T.R. and his family called him Theo, Roosevelt's often referred to, as I say, as Teddy. On a hunting excursion in Mississippi in 1902, Roosevelt was the only member of the party not to have shot a black bear. And other members of the party uh, kind of felt bad about that, and they found one and sort of uh, tied him the, the bear to a tree to allow Roosevelt to shoot it. You know, that way it ensured that the sitting president had success in his, his hunting expedition. Roosevelt, however, refused to shoot it, uh, saying that it was unsportsmanlike. And uh, with the bear, with bear was injured and suffering, Roosevelt ordered that the bear be put down to ease its pain. Anyway, when, when, when a, card, a, a cartoonist picked up on this story, uh, he drew Roosevelt with the bear, and uh, you can see that cartoon here on the, in this, this slide. And uh, a New York City candy shop owner had an idea, and he put in his shop window two stuffed bears. Children like to play with small stuffed animals, and he, he made two stuffed bears that his wife had made. And uh, he, he sold them, and it, it sort of launched a buying craze that uh, led to the so-called teddy bears. And Roosevelt agreed and l l let them call them teddy bears and even posed with the bear, as you can see in the picture here. In any event, T.R. had his gregarious, forceful personality, and he spoke of the presidency as a, quote, bully pulpit. Uh, Roosevelt used bully frequently to define first rate, although it really meant the ability to influence. Indeed, Roosevelt had a, a forceful personality, as I've said, and, uh, you know, later in, in the uh, Age of Reform topic, we'll look at his policies, but uh, all throughout, it was pushed by a very activist presidency, Roosevelt's bully pulpit. This concludes uh, the rise of Teddy Roosevelt.